At the top of the sheet, we have a recommendation to read the entire page. You should certainly do that before you get started. I think it's very helpful to have a full view of where you're going with the assignment, but I'm just gonna jump right in. Since I personally already know what everything uh, says on here. So I'm looking at our first step. Create a 400 by 500 canvas in Fireworks. Your canvas should maintain the default resolution for web images. For the background, use black. Save your file with your last name as the file name in the default Fireworks format. So I'm going to jump over to Fireworks. I'm going to want to create a new document with a 400 pixel width and 500 pixel height. I wanted to keep my default resolution so I don't change this from 72. And then I'm going to use a background of black, which happens to already be selected for me, but I certainly could have typed in my hex color code or just selected uh, black. I need to go ahead and save my file. And I'm just going to save it with my last name. I didn't change the file extension. Up here it says uh, .png. In CS6, this would actually say .fw.png, and that is the default editable PNG file format. Um, I don't want to get into to why that isn't the case on my screen, but on yours you would have .fw.png. We just, uh, if we're saving it in the default, we just don't make any changes with that save dialog box. Step two is next. Create a composite shape on your canvas with a transparent fill and colored stroke of three pixels. The composite shape should represent a snowman drawn with three circles on top of each other. They get smaller towards the top, like the picture on our right, this one over here. All of the circles should be aligned so that the snowman is symmetrical. The shape should be centered in the canvas, both horizontally and vertically. The snowman should be 150 pixels wide. Height can vary as long as it exceeds the width. So I'm going to go back to fireworks and I'm going to start to draw my snowman. I knew that I wanted to use a vector tool to start out with because of all this discussion of composite shape and stroke and fill. That was uh, pretty much indicated to me. I'm drawing my three ellipses and I chose a width of 150 for the bottom. Um, for my bottom circle, I chose 150. That was because the assignment asked me for my snowman at the end to have a width of 150. But I certainly could have resized it when I was done. There are many different ways that I could draw the snowman. So now I have my three ellipses and I wanna make sure that they're aligned so that my snowman is symmetrical, so that I have the same amount of snowman to the left as I would have on the, the right. Oops, I thought I had selected all of these. Let me make sure all those are selected and I'm gonna align them. So personal preference, whether or not you want to overlap these more or not. So there's many different ways to draw the snowman, but at the end of the day, we want a composite shape. So instead of having these three ellipses as we see in the layers panel, we just want a single shape. So I'm gonna to go to Modify, Combine Paths, and I'm going to select Union. And we'll see in the Property Inspector that this is a single shape. Uh, in CS6, you would see the words Composite Path here rather than Pack. My snowman should have a transparent fill and a colored stroke of three pixels. Note that I'm only supposed to use the hex color codes that were given in the assignment. So I'm going to go ahead and use one of those now. And the last thing I'm going to do is make sure that I'm definitely horizontally and vertically aligned in the canvas using the align panel.
step three tells us to create a new layer named name. Using a 40 point serif font, add your first and last name to the canvas. Your name should be vertically and horizontally centered on this new layer and should be below the layer containing your snowman. Then I want to hide the layer. So I'm going to go back to fireworks and I'm going to use the layers panel to create a new layer. One of the things that I neglected to uh, remind us earlier is if any of your panels are missing, like the align or layers, we can obtain all of these through the window menu. So I created my new layer named name. My new layer needs to be underneath the layer with my snowman. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I, that was why I was trying to trying to close it first. Um, gosh, why am I having so much so many trouble with that? Okay, I want to make sure that the new layer, the layer that I want to draw on, is the layer that's selected. That is how my next object is going to end up as a component of this layer, rather than a component of the previous layer one. When I am done with this, I'm going to align it to the horizontal and vertical center. I want to talk a little bit about my choices here. Although these were already set for me, I used a color code that was on the sheet. I changed my font size to 40 point. If you need to make any changes, you need to select all of the text. You know, if I wanted to, to change this to you know, different, I wanted to, to make sure that I selected everything in the text box first. Also, it said to pick a serif font. Times New Roman is an example of a serif font. It's a font that has these serifs or these the lines here at the, um, if you look at the lower left-hand corner and the top right-hand corner of the S, That'd be a good example of a serif, as opposed to a sans serif font like Arial, which is crisp and clean on the edges. The last thing I wanted to do was hide my layer. I want to hide the whole layer. So rather than clicking the I symbol just for the component of my name, I'm going to make sure I hide the entire layer. Step four tells us to use a vector object to draw a 200 pixel star in the upper left corner of your canvas. The star should have a transparent stroke and a gradient fill that utilizes three of the color codes provided. The star should be on the same layer as your snowman. So I'm going to switch to the layer with my snowman and I'm going to draw my star using a vector tool. There's a number of ways to do this as well, but I'm just going to pick the star auto shape because it will save me uh, some time. Wanted this to be 200 pixels. I find that it is just quicker to resize with the property inspector rather than trying to make sure that your drawing is you know, the proper shape to, to begin with. So my star needs to have a transparent stroke and a gradient fill. I just gave this a solid fill so you could see the star uh, because of the fact that we had made the, the stroke transparent. It, it sort of disappeared for a moment there. I'm going to go ahead and give this a gradient fill. Any of these gradients would do. I'm just going to pick linear since it's right there at the top, easy to select. So the instructions tell me that I need to use three colors. So I'm going to go ahead and add three color codes from my sheet.
to add another color, I just along my gradient, notice that my cursor has a plus sign. It means that I will just add my color there. Step five tells us to copy the star. Our copy should appear on the same layer and spaced 20 pixels below the original star. Both stars, oops, there's a typo there. Uh, both stars should be the same size and have the same placement for the left and right edges. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this. With vector tools, uh, copying a vector component is, oops, yeah, I had, oh, you know what? I'm actually, I'm using the keyboard shortcuts for the PC. I'll just go ahead and copy and paste. So I want these two stars to be spaced 20 pixels from each other. So I'm gonna use the align panel for that. And I want them to have the same left and right edge I'm gonna go ahead and just align them along the left and I don't need to actually worry about the right because of the fact that they're both 200 pixels wide. They obviously have the same, the same right edge. On a new layer named My Text, Type Happy Cinco de Mayo in a 25-point sans serif font. Have your text appear in the shape of an ellipse that is 275 pixels in width and 50 pixels in height. Center the text horizontally and vertically on the canvas. I'm going to go ahead and type in my text. I just made a mistake. I needed to create a new layer. Uh, I can certainly do this afterwards. I can copy it up, but it just uh, would have saved me time to do it in advance. But anyway, so I've created my layer. Excuse me, I was looking up the name for that. I actually, it should have been my text. and I wanted to use a 25 point font. So I wanna go ahead and select all of this text and change my font size. And I also wanted to use a sans serif font. So that would be a font like Arial. I'm already using one of the hex color codes provided for my text, so I don't need to, to change this. I could, it, it wouldn't make a, a difference. Now I want my text to appear in the shape of an ellipse, so I'm gonna go ahead and draw that ellipse that is 275 with a height of 50. And to use my selection tool to select both the text as well as the ellipse, and I'm going to go to the text menu, and I'm going to pick Attach to Path. Want to center the text horizontally and vertically on the canvas. Didn't. Why that's not, oh, I see what's happening here. Oh, well, it's interesting to note that, that that's what's happening with the, the text. It's actually centering the text and not the, the ellipse. Let me just read through this real quick and make sure I've covered all the points and then we're ready to move on.
Okay. Moving on, return to the name layer. Use a bitmap tool to draw a star with a 15 pixel stroke below your name. Dimensions do not matter as long as it does not overlap with the text and the entire star fits on the canvas. Save the changes to my file. I want to use a bitmap tool. Since I wanted to adjust the stroke to 15, I need to use the brush tool because the pencil tool does not allow me to adjust the stroke. Going to go ahead and use one of the hex color codes on my sheet. My name was centered here on the canvas. So if I went back to the layer with my name, by selecting the layer, it means that I'm going to be drawing on this layer. I could now draw my star. Uh, note that the star uh, didn't need to be any particular size as long as it didn't overlap with my name. So I could just draw this. Now notice that you can't actually see it. That's because the layer is hidden. I could turn the layer back on momentarily to see how I've done. Not that great, um, but it's, it's okay. Or I could go ahead and delete that component and draw a star better that I, now that I can see what, what my path is. But remember, I wasn't actually told to reveal the layer. The layer still should have been hidden, regardless of whether or not I draw on it hidden and don't look at it or look at it afterwards or reveal it to draw. The layer should be hidden at the end of the day because I wasn't told to you know, reveal the layer later. We've now reached step eight, which is to save this file. I'm going to go ahead and end the video here because the steps from this point forward are identical to uh, the steps in, in other samples and, and videos as well as the other option for this particular exam. So at this point, I can just save my changes and we will end the video.